evening was Philip Kirsch, here seen on the right next to Whitney Harris. Philip Kirsch is the chief judge at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. Good evening, I would like to speak to you about the historic breakthrough that was the Nuremberg trials, the legacy of these trials in general, and the specific legacy that is the International Criminal Court. I turn first to the Nuremberg trials themselves. In this context, I refer primarily to the International Military Tribunal which opened here 60 years ago. But we should not forget the subsequent trials which, which occurred here or in the military and civilian courts of different nations within the umbrella of the Nuremberg proceedings. As a first matter, it is remarkable that the Nuremberg trials happened at all. The trials were not entirely without precedent, as before Nuremberg there was an established law of war and military courts had conducted war crimes trials. But the scope of the proceedings conducted in this court was unlike anything that had come before. The few previous war crimes trials by national court martial had focused on minor defendants for isolated and well-established violations of the law governing the conduct of hostilities. At Nuremberg, not only military leaders, but also high-level officials and even private citizens faced trial for some of the most serious crimes known to humanity. The Nuremberg trials were by no means inevitable, as was said earlier. Many argue that the best response to the Nazi regime was the summary execution of Nazi, Nazi officials. Other, others argue that international law was concerned only with states and not with the actions of individuals. Faced with serious violations of international law, the creators of the Nuremberg trials decided differently. They concluded, and I quote, first, individuals can and should be held accountable for crimes which constitute violated violations of international law. As was famously declared by the tribunal in its judgment, crimes against international law are committed by men, not by abstract entities. And only by punishing individuals who commit those crimes can the provisions of international law be enforced. Second, individuals should only be punished through a fair trial which safeguards the rights of the accused. In a world in which international law paid little regard at the time to individuals, the International Military Tribunal and subsequent trials were remarkable developments. If you had asked me even 10 years ago about the Nuremberg trials, I would have said they were a significant historic event, but that their legacy was not fulfilled. Now, however, the ICC stands as a direct descendant of those trials. Nuremberg has taken on added meaning as the beginning of a system of international criminal justice. History will continue to unfold, and as it does, it will continue to shape how we view the past. How we view Nuremberg will also depend in part on what happens with the ICC. The ICC is well placed to be a credible and effective institution, but it cannot succeed without support. If we ensure that the ICC has the support to succeed, Nuremberg will be forever remembered as the necessary and historic breakthrough which made this possible. The world has come too far and the consequences are too great for us to fail. We must continue to carry forward the legacy of Nuremberg and to make an effective permanent international court a lasting reality. Thank you very much.